now we're going to go on to trigonometry, the other side of the sheet here. Right, so um, let's look at volume to begin with. If it's a cuboid here, and all you have to do is multiply the dimensions here. So it's three high, so we've got three, it's uh, three deep, it's four deep, so times four, and it's 3.5 wide, so times 3.5, and you should get 42. Oh, and I think I have missed the units. Don't make a mistake. I found out often. I can make mistakes too myself. Just think of this. Okay, it's got an invisible m cubed. m to the power of 3 because it's three dimensions. All right, cross up and deep as well. So m to the power of 3. You might actually lose a mark. Lucky I'm not doing the test here. Lose a single mark for that. All right. So, surface area. Now that's like if you painted everything. You've got to work out the area of the sides. And notice that this um, side here is exactly the same as this side. The top and the bottom are the same. So you can double everything, can't you? Um, the, the front and the back will be the same. So if I work out just one of each and then double it, I multiply it by two. This is where this two comes from here. So I can work out the base plus a side plus any the front or the back, doesn't matter, either one of those, and just double everything and then you get the, um, the surface area, if I wanted to paint something, how much area there is there. Okay, so, first of all, the base at the bottom, it's just the dimensions of the bottom, you've got to multiply them together, so four times three and a half, well, you could either do it on a calculator or you could go four times three is twelve and then another half of four is two, so you're getting fourteen, all right? Just do it on a calculator. 4 times 3.5 to get 14. Okay, next one, a side. One of these sides here is 4 by 3, so you can get 12. That's 3 times 4. Um, and for the front, if you did that on a calculator, uh, you get 3.5 times 3 high. Notice that that 3 is the same as this 3 over here. That's got to be 3 because the back is 3. It's all the same height, so 3 times 3.5 will give you uh, the front which is 10.5. Add them all together, multiply by 2, and you get 73 metres squared. Distance between A and D. Now I haven't actually drawn in all of the um, labels that you should have on yours. Um, you might have a few more labels on your one. I don't know, originally I think I put more. But um, anyway, A and D. So we've got um, Pythagoras, you need to use Pythagoras to get this. Notice that we've, we're given two sides here. We've got 3.5 is this, um, is this line between here and here, and also 3 high, and there'll be a diagonal between A and D, and that will be the long side of a right angled triangle. All right, so there's a right angle over here, 90 degrees. Make a right angled triangle between a and D, you can put a line there, or make a right angle triangle of one side 3.5, and then the height is 3. So we use the Pythagoras rule here of the square root of those two sides squared to get the longer side. And notice that that diagonal is what we want, it's the longest side, so we use plus to get something that's longer. And you should end up getting, once you take the square root of that, you should end up getting. Uh, 4.61 meters squared. You could have 4.6 in fact if you wanted to, one dp, one decimal place. Um, usually don't go beyond that, either choose one decimal place or two decimal places and practically every case you're okay and you're fine if you choose that. One dp or do two dp. I've chosen two dp there. Um, now distance between a and h. Now um, Oh, would have been better to have drawn this in, um, but hang on, what we, if you think of that diagonal there, okay, um, and originally I was actually going to draw it in, if I made another video I'd draw it in, it's run out of time here, diagonal along here, and then another diagonal along from A to H, okay, now it's hard to visualise, little bit hard to visualize this but in fact we can now call this side this or this diagonal here can be um, a shorter side compared to 
it's a long diagonal that goes all the way from A to H. It's going to be even longer than this diagonal from A to D. And then if you think of the other side over here being 4, we in fact will get a tilted right angle triangle. There'll be a, a little right angle angle in here. So if you draw a line, I'd like you to actually do this, draw a line from here to A to D, and then draw a line from A to H, and you'll be able to see that this triangle A, D, H triangle is a right angle triangle. There will be a right angle, it's like tipped over, right angle right in here somewhere, you'll be able to see the right angle, tipped over right angle right there. Um, so because it's a right angle triangle, once again we can use Pythagoras. So we can take those two sides, that diagonal that we already got, um, which is 4.61 meters squared, 4.61, and plus the other side for there, and you square them. Okay, so we're using the same technique, just using Pythagoras. Pythagoras again on this side here. This, well, this diagonal here, so it's a side of a, a drawn-in triangle. If you draw, if you do actually draw a triangle, like I've said, um, it's a one side of a triangle here, another side of a triangle, and then you're getting the longest side of a triangle. Um, so you're plusing, you're adding again, and taking the square root, you should get 6.10 meters squared, two decimal places. Angle ABC over here, angle ABC is just a right angle triangle of 90 degrees. Um, mind you, you might get asked for, for, for CAB as the angle of CAB. What, well, what's that? Okay, well, it's got to be 70 in there, doesn't it? Because you've got 70 plus 20 is gives you 90 plus another 90 gives 180. That side, well, that angle right there is going to be 70 degrees. Alright, so angles inside a triangle have to add to 180. So just realise that that might be a fit. If you were asked for C, A, B, then that angle in there would be 70 degrees. Alright, now, I'm trying to work out what Y is. Now I've labelled this as Y, even though it's a cross the so side here is Y. You can label it any letter you like, really. Okay, so um, first step in doing this, you've got to use trigonometry. You've got to use so, ka, and toa. You're going to have to memorize this. So, ka, toa. Just say it over and over again, remember it. Um, and then you've got to label the sides that are relevant. Now, this side here is not relevant, it is blank. Um, it's not an unknown letter at the moment, and it's also not a number. You haven't been given any value for this. It's not an unknown letter either, so leave it blank. But this one here, Y, has uh, is a letter there, so you've got to label it. Now that's called the adjacent. Adjacent means that it's next to the angle that is given. And the longest side has also been given 50 centimetres and you can label that longest side the hypotenuse H. So we have A and H. When you have A and H, it fits in with CA. So C A H CA. And the C will stand for cos. Okay, so what I've written down is cos of the angle, which is 20 degrees, equals A over H. Now A was Y, so don't write an A. A in fact is Y, so instead of A, this is like C A H, right? So reading across the page and then down C A H. So A is Y and H, the hypotenuse is 50. Alright, and then what you can do is rearrange this, that 50 divided by 50 becomes times 50 on the other side. So you get 50 cos 20, and then the 50 goes away, so you're just left with Y. <laughs> So you can, excuse me, just, um, you can just type out 50 cos 20 on your calculator and that will give you the y value of 46.98 to 2 dp. Once again, you could make it 1 dp if you wanted to. Okay, um, 
height oh, just another thing about rounding you know you look at the third decimal place and if it was five or more you would have to round the second decimal place up from um, from whatever it was one higher okay otherwise if it's um, zero one two three or four third decimal place if it was um, four or less then you just don't change anything you just take the two decimal places and cut everything else off on the calculator don't write down a whole lot of decimal places um, one or two dp are enough all right now we worked out the height to be 17.10 meters now how did i do that well i haven't actually got the working in here i'm just actually going to have to scroll down to do to show you that here so I actually did it further down, right? So I just drawn it again here because I don't want to mess up my diagram, which was used to work out the the other thing y. Now I've removed y here for a reason because it's no longer relevant. To show you that only the opposite o, the side, the height is in fact opposite the 20 degrees now. The adjacent, I didn't write it in. We used that earlier on, but we're not using it anymore, not to work out the height anyway. All right, so that one is irrelevant. There's no no letter in there anymore. We don't use it anyway, and we're not trying to figure it out. So we don't label it. All right, so over here, um, the H is still there, 50. Um, but we have the opposite and the H, so that's SO. S-O-H for sine. Um, S, is, S stands for sine, so we have sine of the angle 20 degrees equals the height um, now we don't know what height is, but this is like a missing letter, you could write in the full word if you want to instead of a whole letter. I've just written it all in there just to try and, so you're not confused by the H over here. If I used another H here, it might get a little bit confusing. This is a hypotenuse over here, a little bit different. So I wrote the whole word in instead of H this time. So that's in fact the opposite over the hypotenuse. So opposite in fact was the height and the hypotenuse was in fact 50, so height over 50 will give you the O over the H. Um, right, so once again move the 50 across to the other side, so you get sine or 50 sine 20 into your calculator and you should end up with 17.10 meters to do DP. Alright, at this point just very very quickly um, just have a look at this if you like. Um, if we reversed things, you may need to know this just in case. All right, just wanted to show you that um, reversing everything. So if it was um, 50 over H, so suppose we put the 50 here and we wanted to work out the, um, the hypotenuse, wanted to work out that over there. All right. So instead, we've got 50 over H. Um, we've just reversed, turned these upside down. The unknown is down the bottom instead, and the given value of 50 is at the top. Now, you just have to work that out differently. Make sure you use divide in this case here. If there's an unknown at the bottom of the expression, then use divide. If the unknown is at the top of the expression, use multiply. Okay, so let's go over here to um, work out the rest of us. Is going back to where we were. Okay, so um, we needed to work out the area. So the area of this is going to be the base times the height divided by two, or half of the base times the height. Same thing, divided by two. Um, so we've worked out the base, and we worked out the base to be across here, forty-six point nine eight multiply that by our height that we worked out as well 17.10 divided by 2 and we should end up with this as our meter squared as our area of our triangle there. Perimeter is all the way around so we've got 50 going around on that side um, 46.98 that side there and then AB this side here 17.10 you add them all together to get the perimeter of 114.08 meters to two decimal places now here's our very difficult question, very difficult question. So you need to know how to do this, quite complicated here really. Um, so what we're going to do first of all, 
is, um, and I don't think I've labeled anything here, how did I get costs? Well, I haven't put the labels, but, um, oh, I have actually, hang on, there's A and there's H. What I did, what I did first here, okay, what you have to do is extend this. You just have a magic little thing here, you have to actually extend it to make a right angle triangle because we cannot deal with, um, with anything, you cannot use soca toa or cos or anything whatsoever. Uh, sine cos are tan. You cannot use them without a right angle triangle. So we're going to have to extend our triangle in order to make it into a right angle triangle. And then, as part of our right angle triangle, we have a missing side. Well, that's our hypotenuse. It's 40. All right. And all you need is an angle, and then you can do stuff. Right. So angles in a line add up to 180 so we get uh, given 100 here so that little um, that other angle there has to be 80 all right so as soon as we've got our angle there um, we know that this we could put a little x missing x we need to just follow this it's got to just trust me on this here put an x in here missing x um, and um, that'll be adjacent to our angle of of um, 80 degrees. Notice that there's two right angle triangles in this whole figure. We've got a big right angle triangle here and we've got a little right angle triangle, a very narrow one here. We're dealing with that little right angle triangle to begin with. Right? So we know that that little right angle triangle has a hypotenuse of 40, it has an adjacent side of X and an angle of 80 degrees. So we're going to use um, A and H which is ka is cos of the angle of 80 equals the adjacent which is x adjacent to the angle of 80 and the hypotenuse of 40 um, meters all right so once again rearranging everything we should get 40 cos 80 that should give us 6.95 so we know that x is 6.95 now we can then use this um, to work out another unknown so well, we might want to work out this. If we can work out this side over here, then we could use trigonometry to get our final side that we want to work out. We want to work out our DE over here, don't we? Distance DE. If we had the 60 and we had the other side to this big right angle triangle, as well as the 60 and the X, because you add them together to get that full side all the way across from here to here, um, then you would be able to use Pythagoras to find DE. Well, first of all, we've actually got to use Pythagoras again to get this side here, because we don't even know what this side is yet. Um, but we know this is 40, and we know X. All right? So this is, in fact, a shorter side. It's a medium-sized side. It's, it's definitely shorter than this hypotenuse of 40 here. All right, so we've got 40 squared minus 6.95. Mind you, this is quite a difference. This is an excellent bit, so... If you're really struggling, don't worry about this too much, unless you're really going for a very high mark in the in the test, this kind of thing. Okay, so um, what we've got here is um, this side here, and you're going to subtract to get it because um, uh, the hypotenuse is the longest side, 40 there, and this one is in fact slightly shorter. Okay, so um, side that has a right angle next to it is going to be shorter. The uh, longest side is a diagonal along here. All right, so um, 40 minus, we use min minus to get a slightly smaller side. And we subtract the other very tiny side there. And we square them, take the square root, and we get 39.39 will give us this other side over here. Now we then have the 39.39 and the 66.95, which is a combined 60 and X together, 66.95. Uh, we square that 66.95 and we square the 39.39 and we add them together, take the square root to get the longest side of all here, which is DE and you should end up with 77.7 .7 to 1 dp. Now what I've done actually, mind you, is I've taken 2 dp in doing my working and in my final answer I've taken a, a 
least decimal places, just one dp, because uh, what happens is you actually, every step you take, you lose a little bit of accuracy. And so to keep it legitimate, um, the second decimal place may be a little bit out by the time you've rounded everything off and you do the final working. We often take um, slightly des less decimal places. So 77.7 um, .7 would be good, one dp. All right, so we've already explained all of that, and I think that's everything that needs to be explained. There might be one last thing that I've just done at the very bottom here. I'll just quickly explain. If, in fact, you needed to find an angle, um, missing angle here. So um, we use um, the opposite here, which is 20, and the hypotenuse is, is 15. So we have, in fact, to find a missing angle as notice that all up until now we've just been finding missing sides. Missing angle is going to be sine to the negative one. And notice we use sine because it's opposite and hypotenuse. Those are the given sides here, O and H. O and H means sine, so, and we use sine for that. Okay, if you're given different sides, you'd be using um, cos or tan, depending on what sides have been given to you. O and H were given, so... Um, opposite over, ah, uh, heck, okay. I think I should have written this in around the other way. I'm not going to change this now. I've made a little bit of a mistake. That should be 20 and that should be 15. All right, so obviously that one should have been the 20. I've drawn it in wrong. Silly me. Okay, I don't have time to fix this up, this video up at the moment, but that should have been 15 there and 20 over there. It should have been the, the uh, shorter side, obviously, is 15. Okay, the point is here, O over H, and you, um, this is an obviously in a bit of a rush trying to get this whole thing done, it took me too long, too many times to actually get this video done, um, it's a bit frustrating, but in the end, um, if you can just try and figure it out yourself here, opposite over the hypotenuse, um, it should be, if it was 15 there, shorter side should be 15, longer side 20 really, so O over H, um, opposite 15 over 20, and you take the negative sign with brackets around it. It's a bit of a shame that that's a little bit been messed up here. Think of those numbers as being reversed there. 15 here and 20 up there for the longest side and then it should work. All right, um, so that's it. That's all done and hopefully there's no other errors. I don't think there's anything else wrong there. So I hope good luck in the test.